for the Holy Spirit being my helper and being my teacher and leading me and guiding me into all truth. Father, thank you for making things known unto us on today. Thank you for revelation knowledge on today. Thank you that the eyes of our understanding today is being enlightened today. God, we thank you and we praise you. And God, I thank you that I have been crucified with Christ. And it's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me, in Jesus' name. So we give you glory, honor, and praise. <clears throat> in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> God is just so good, isn't he? In spite of God is just so, so, so good. And I don't know about you, but I, but I love him. Because he's an awesome father. He is just worthy. And I tell you what, we saturate the atmosphere with him. We saturate the atmosphere with the breath of life on today. Hallelujah. Every substance that's in the atmosphere. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we curse it at the root in Jesus' name. God, we thank you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Matthew, the sixth chapter, and let's see what God has to say. Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 8. Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 8. Hallelujah. And the word of God reads, Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father know what things ye have need of before ye ask. I'm going to say it again. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father know what things ye have the need of before you ask. I want to talk about this morning, God the Father knows what you need. God the Father knows what you need. And if we would just meditate on that, knowing that God is our Father, and he know what we need. Everything that we need, God knew that we needed it even before we need it. So if we focus on that, we wouldn't have to worry about things that we think we don't have. Do we think that God is going to put us here on earth without? Do we think that our Heavenly Father is a Father that does not love us, that does not care about us? And see, in this right here, Jesus was talking and he was saying, even unto um, the people, the disciples, disciples, he was telling them, he said, when you pray, <clears throat> evidently we need this word. Hallelujah. And we're going to go forth with it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we see what Jesus was talking about here. He was telling them he was dealing with prayer. And he was telling us how we should pray. He said we shouldn't be like the heathens that, you know, repeat the prayers over and over again, say things over and over again in prayer. He said don't be like the heathens. That means don't be like the unbelievers, the ones that are not saved. He said when we go to prayer, we should know that our Father know what we're in the need of before we asked him. So if we know that the Father know what we're in the need of before we asked him, we wouldn't keep repeating it over and over again like the Father don't know. I don't know about you, but before I even really got to know the Father, I thought repeating over and over again was getting God to hear, was getting God to do what I wanted him to do. But God has already done everything that he's going to do. Only thing we have to do is reach out and touch, receive what God has already done. When we look in the word of God, how do we know that God is going to um, meet all of our needs? First of all, we have to understand that he is the creator. He created us. We didn't create ourselves. We were created by him. 
And I don't know about you, but when you create something, you know what you created and, and what that is going to provide and what the needs of what you created is going to do for people. And the Lord was giving me an example with Ford cars. You know, we have people that create the Ford cars. And when they created them, they knew what it would take for that car to run. <clears throat> so what they did when they, um, you know, sent these cars out, they knew what it would take. They knew what kind of oil. They knew what was in the engine. They knew everything about these cars. So they had to train people to know what these cars would do. The salesmen had to know before they sell the cars, before the cars were sold. Before, um, the mechanics had to know everything that was under the hood of that car. So when something would go on, they were well, well aware what that car was doing and what that car was not doing. So this is why our father, if he created us, he know all about us, don't he? So whatever go on with us, we need to go to the father because he know what we in the need of even before we asked him. So any time that you go through in your life, instead of going to man first, <clears throat> you need to go to God. You need to seek him. That's why in this same chapter it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, his way of doing things, and then all of these things shall what? Be added unto you. When we seek the Father, when we seek the Creator, when we seek the Maker of all things, we know deep down inside, Father God, you know what I'm in the need of even before I ask right now. But when we go ahead of our Father and we try to meet those needs on our own, then we end up messing up. We end up getting in debt. We end up doing things that we should not have done. But when we get to know Him, and that's the key, knowing Him as your Father. And when we know him as a father, we know he's a father of love. When I go back to David in Psalms 139, David knew him as a father. He knew that God knew all about him. See, you got to know that God know all about you, that he know all of your needs, even outside of how we feel, even outside of what goes on in our lives. God know what was going to happen even before it happened. David said in Psalms 139, he was saying, God, you know my uprising. You know when I lay down. You know when I get up. Father, you know my thoughts from afar off. Even before I'm thinking something, you know what I'm thinking about. God, even before I say something, you know what I'm going to say even before I say it. He said, God, you, you know all about me. God knew um, us by name even before we were named. You know, I told <coughs> Jeremiah, before I form you, in your mother's womb, I knew you. So God knew the path that Jeremiah was going to take. He knew Jeremiah's destiny. So if God know everything about us, I'm going to ask you a question today. Why is it that we don't want to go to the Father? Why is it that we don't want to seek the Father when we get in trouble? Why is it that we turn to man instead of turning to God? Look at your neighbor and say, Father God knows what you're in the need of before you ask. Now, do we really believe that in this house today, that God already know your need before you ask? See, that got to get deep down on the inside of you. God already knew you were going to have car problems before you had the car problems. God already knew that, you know, you were going to not have the rent when you needed the rent. God already knew that a repair was going to pop up even when you didn't know the repair was going to pop up. So, Father, God already knew what you were in the need of, and he made provision for that need. This is why you got to seek him before you seek anybody or anything. That's why the Bible said, those that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew, renew, <clears throat> renew their script. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and what? Not think. Why? Because you're waiting upon the Lord. So when we take the time to wait on him, we're knowing him as a loving father. We're knowing him that we're saying God is going to be my protector. He's going to be my deliverer. <clears throat> He's going to be my provider. He's going to be everything that I need in my life. And when we know these things, we don't run everywhere. We don't get weary. We don't feel cast down. <clears throat> but we give God glory for what he's already done. Even though we don't see it in the natural, we know that it's done because he's our father. 
And he know that need. So when he took me back, even into the book of Genesis, and I was meditating on that, but I stopped. Even with David in Psalms 139, when David was talking about how God knew his thoughts from afar off, how God knew what he was going to say even before he said it, how God knew when he was going to lay down, when he was going to get up. God knew the path. He knew everything about David. And I said, God, you're the same God. So you know all about me. You know my situation even before there's a situation. So as I was sitting there meditating on that, I said, who cannot trust a God like that? A God that know everything. Before you were created, <clears throat> God knew your plans. He knew your purposes. He knew everything. So today, I want you to meditate on a father who knows. And if he know, you don't have to worry about what's going on around you. You don't have to worry about what people say. You have to put your trust in him. And see, this scripture, we use this scripture lightly. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. This is what we do. We say, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. That's the first part of that scripture is trust in him. It's depending on him. It's relying on him to know that he is God, to know that he know be <clears throat> better than what we know. Seems like the more I bring it out, something tried to come in and hit me. The devil is a lie. But I'm going to keep bringing it because I'm trusting him today. I'm going to keep bringing it because that's what we got to do because the word overpower. Everything that the enemy is even tempting or trying to do. See, he may try it, but it's not going to succeed. Amen? So we give God glory because the word is all powerful. Amen? So God knows that somebody in this house needs this word today, and this word is going to go forth. Amen? So we see what's happening here about knowing the Father. When you know the Father, it says you trust in him with all thine heart. And he go to key, leaning not to your own understanding. So when we trust him, we don't lean to how we feel. We don't lean to what we want to lean to, but we're trusting him to the point to say, God, I'm going to acknowledge you in all my ways. And God, you're going to be the one to direct my steps. You're going to be the one to show me the way that I need to go. So the first thing is, in order for us to... Know that the Father has our back. We have to know him as Father. How do I know him as Father? I spend time in the Word. I get to know him through the Word of God. The more you know him through the Word of God, you're going to know that he has your back. It don't matter what is happening in the natural. We know that God has already covered the natural with the supernatural. This is why when you know him and you know his Word, you begin to speak those things that what? Be not. As though they were. And this is what God want us to do. Even in our hard times, even though we know that things around us is changing, we begin to speak the word of God and we begin to see life even through that dead situation. Amen. Now going back to Genesis, we looked at how the earth was void. There was darkness. You know, it was nothing there. But God took nothing and he made it out of something. How did he do it? By the spoken word. And we know that God said, let there be and there was. So when things happen in our lives, we have to do what the Father did. Because we want to be an example of who? Of the Father. So whatever the Father did, that's what we do. Remember, Jesus said he don't do nothing outside of the Father. He said, I only do what I see the Father do. Jesus only acted upon what the Father does. How did he know what the Father does? Because he spent time with the Father. So when things come up in his life or things were not right around him, Jesus began to use the word, the word that was coming from his father. Because he walked with the father. He talked with the father. He was with the father. Matter of fact, he was the father. And he was in the flesh, right, as man. So he did not take the word of God lightly. But when we go back to the Garden of Eden, when God created everything, the Bible said that he created male and female in his what? in his image, in his likeness. So we know that first we were spiritual beings because God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in what? In spirit and in truth. So we see that we were spiritual beings and God gave us what? Dominion. 
He gave us authority. He gave us power to rule and reign over all the earth. Remember the heaven and the heavens are the Lord, but the earth he has given to who? The children of men. So he has given us the earth. So in order for us to rule and reign, we rule and reign by God's way of doing things, by the word of God. After he done that, after he gave dominion, see, we were still spiritual beings. He took and formed a man out of what? The dust of the earth. But God had to blow what? The spirit of God into man. And man became a what? A living soul. So without the spirit of God, we wouldn't be alive. So when God blew into man's nostrils, he became man. He became a living soul. And what did God do? He placed him. He placed him in that garden that God had created. But remember, before God placed man in that garden, guess what? God was calling forth what man would need while he was in what? The garden. God ain't going to, this is one thing I love about God. God is not going to leave you in a place without supplying what you need. That's not the God I serve. So him being a father, he knew what was needed for them even to be in the Garden of Eden. So we knew that it was plants and trees that he created for, for food, for humans. But not only did he do it for humans, he done it for the animals as well because he knew that the animals needed nourishment. So he gave them what, <clears throat> what they needed. After he did that, he recognized that man was alone, right? Who did he give him? He gave him a companion. He gave him a help me. He gave him somebody to help him to carry out the plans and the purposes of God here on earth. But this is one thing that God showed me. Remember, God know everybody need, right? So he knew that man needed a mate. He knew that we also needed food while we were here on earth. But then the next part that got me, and I had to stop there, it said that both of them were naked. And they were not ashamed. Now, look, I'm saying, okay, God, the reason why God put that there is because he wanted us to know about marriage. This is the thing. When you got to the part about naked and not being ashamed, they had the food, they had everything that they need, and you're thinking, wow, God, why didn't you give them some clothes? Because they were married. They were one. They had come together as one. That means that they wasn't ashamed because Adam's body was Eve's body. Eve's body was Adam's body. So when they looked at each other, they wasn't ashamed to be naked, to be in the nude, because they belonged to each other. This is why, and God stopped me there. He said, this is why you have the enemy using, you know, you can be saved and you can still go to bed together. That's out of the order of God. Remember, we're still talking about God know what you need. And all the things that you need is going to be in order with the kingdom, the way that the kingdom does things. I'm, I'm going outside of your food, your clothing, you know, all of that. God fixed everything you need according to his order, according to his plan. So that means when man and woman come together, they did not come together out of order. They come together in a union. They come together in a marriage. So there was no shame when they saw each other naked. You have now people that come together outside of marriage and they're not ashamed no more for this man or this woman to see them because they're committing fornication. That's outside of the will of God. God didn't create that as a need, right? No, he didn't. God know what you're in the need of even before you ask. He know that if you need a mate, he know when you're going to get that mate. He know the timing for your mate. See, we put ourselves in situations and we try to grab hold to a male or female and they see our nakedness and we get used to them seeing our nakedness. And then when they leave us, they done saw and done uncovered something that was so precious that God was saying, no, that's not for you to do. That's not what I know you in the need of at this time. So God created marriage as a union. And when God showed me that, he said, you got married men and married women out here committing adultery, showing their body to another man and another woman. And God said, what did I say in the beginning? That's for your husband. That's for your wife. That ain't for nobody else to see. Because your body belonged to him and his body belonged to you. You know what people say these days and times? 
they in love, they young, they need to enjoy their life while they're young, not outside this word. Anything that's outside of this word is not God. So God is not going to put something in here for you to do and say that's what you needed. You know how people say, I need a man. I need a mate. I'm tired of being by myself. God know when you need that mate. So see, that's still a need. He know how long you need to be alone before you get hooked up with anybody or anything. But we get tired of being alone. You know why we get tired of being alone? Because we don't know him as father. Because when you know him as father, in those lonely times, you'll say, God, you said, you will never leave me, nor shall you forsake me. God, you will be with me even until the end. So though I'm lonely right now, God, you gave me a comforter. And I need some comfort right now. Because I'm tired of taking showers because they ain't working. So I need for the comforter to come in and comfort me the way that he need to comfort me because my way of getting comfort is getting outside of your will and outside of your word. Your word didn't tell me to go that way. This is what your word told me. Do not commit fornication. Do not commit adultery. See, we're supposed to save ourselves first of all for him. When we know that we're his temple, we're going to line up with his way of doing things, not our way of doing things. So God showed me that <clears throat> scripture said they were naked and they were not ashamed. They had nothing to be ashamed about because they were one. Eve belonged to Adam and Adam belonged to him. So God gave them everything that they needed in that garden. He even gave them each other. But then God gave them some a do and a don't. And they took and went against what God told them not to do. And guess what happened? Y'all know sin come upon the earth. And this is where I'm starting right here with a need. When sin came, God already supplied the need for sin, which was Jesus Christ. Isn't God a good God? God already knew what was going to happen through Adam and Eve. So God already had a plan for sin, which represents death. He said, even when they mess up, I got a plan for you. He said, because I know what you need. He said, my plan is redemption. And that redemption is going to come through my son. But guess what? God didn't even release his son until the time was right for that son to be released. He knew when that son needed to show up. Y'all got to hear what I'm saying. So they had to wait on the Messiah. They had to wait on the Savior. Why? Because it had to go through those generations. Anybody could not fulfill the plan that God had for the coming, y'all don't hear me, for the coming Messiah. And here we are getting out of the will of God, getting out of the way of God, when we should be saying, God, you know my need even before I need it, so I'm going to wait on you no matter if it's 25 years, you know when it should come. And how do we do that? How do we wait so long, y'all? Because we trust God. Because we have gotten to know God. Because we are so intimate with God that we say, God, whatever you say, that's what I'm going to do. If you ain't saying it, God, I'm not doing it. I'm going to be still and still know that you are the true and the living God. No matter what my friends say, no matter what my family say, God, that's not what you say saying right here and now. So I'm going to stand still and I'm going to see the salvation of the Lord because Father knows best and when you know your father knows best I don't care if the archbishop tell you to move if God haven't told you to move and you know him just that well you say out of due respect I'd rather obey God than obey man because God ain't told me to move in that position you know what we look at we look at position more than we look at God and when we look at position more than we look at God, we get into some things that we have to go through to develop us, to put us back in the place that God would have us to be in. Look at your neighbor and say, wait on the Lord. Say, so wait on the Lord. Say, but while you're waiting, be of a good courage because he will strengthen your heart. Say, that's the word. See, that's what he tell us. When you wait on him, 
You got to be of a good courage. Why? Because you know the Father is strengthening your heart because you're waiting on him because you know that your Father know what you're in the need of before you ask. So that's why we always supposed to come to the Father. Well, whatever's going on in our lives, we're supposed to go to him. This is why Jesus said, don't be like the unbelievers. Don't be like the heathens. Don't be like those that keep praying the same thing over and over and over again because they're thinking that the Father don't hear them. Guess what? We're not unbelievers. We're born again. We're the ones that have accepted him as our Lord and as our Savior and as our Master, and we got to have confidence in him. Knowing that he hear us. And he hear us because we're praying his will. And if we're praying his will and know that we're praying his will, then our petition is already answered. So you got to know that the father knows best. You got to know that the father loves you so much. The Bible tells us, here go another scripture we quote. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Y'all, guess what he gave us? He gave us salvation through his son. Why did he give us salvation? Because he knew that's what we were in need of to have life. He knew that death, the ages of sin is death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life through our Lord <clears throat> Jesus Christ. So when we accept him as our Lord and as our Savior, we're accepting what he has done on our behalf. And we have to know that it is what? By grace we're saved through faith, not of ourselves. It is what? The gift of God. So the only thing we have to do is accept what God has made available for us through his son, Jesus Christ. He knew we needed salvation. He knew that salvation meant healing. It means prosperity. It means deliverance. It means safety. He said, I'm giving you a total package. I'm giving you a package that's full of benefits that you don't even have to work for. He said, I have provided this package outside of where you were because he demonstrated his love for us he proved his love even while we were yet in our sin Christ died for us see the father knew that we couldn't fit that bill he knew nobody in this room could keep all of his commands he knew that nobody could do it so he had to send his son so if God knew those needs y'all think about it before we even thought about being sick, God supplied the need for sickness. He said, for by Jesus' stripes, you are already healed. You are already made whole. So guess what? Before sickness even pop up in your life, God said, it's going to try to come your way. But I have already given you what you need. So when sickness began to attack you, you can say, ah, oh, you can't live here. Because Jesus already paid the price for my sicknesses and my diseases. He sent his word. He's already healed me. He's already delivered me from my destruction. So that has already been supplied for. Even before I knew I needed, God had already given it to me. How many know on a job you got to work for it before you get it? But see, in the kingdom, he's already given us every supply that we need through his son, <coughs> son Jesus Christ. We look at even when it comes to your finances, when it comes to your money. He said that he's already supplied our needs according to his riches and glory. By who? By Christ Jesus. So every need that we were in the need of is, has already been supplied by who? By Christ Jesus. So when a need pop up in our lives, we say, God, that need has already been met. God, though I don't have it right now in the physical, I know heaven where I'm from has already supplied every spiritual blessing in heavenly places through Christ Jesus. So, God, I'm pulling those spiritual blessings down here to earth. God, I have more than enough to do what I need to do on today. Let me tell you all something. God is just so good because when me and my husband have things to pop up in our lives, what I do, I look to the Father. I say, Father God, you already know the need, even before there was a need. So I trust you that that's already done. God, though it look like it's going to cost this much, whatever you tell me that I need to do, that's what I'm going to do. Because evidently you got a plan that I yet don't know about. Only thing I need to know is a go ahead on this thing. And if you tell me to go ahead, God, you already got something that you have already worked out. I just need to hear from you today. Father, what would you have me to do about that? 
Because at this point, I don't know what to do because my bank ain't telling me what to do. My money ain't telling me what to do. So I need for you to tell me what to do because all of that is depleted. So, Father, I need to wait and hear. What do you want me to do with that situation? My finances, what I see, don't support this situation. Come on, somebody. My finances don't support this situation. It ain't in the bank. It ain't in my piggy bank. My husband don't have it. My children don't have it. But I have a father who's rich. And you know what I needed even before the need had come up. So, God, I call it down from heaven. And I'm going to give you glory that the supply has already come in. Because you told me that you will, you shall supply that need. So that need is mine right now. I'm calling it forth. Guess why I'm calling it forth? Because you gave me dominion. You gave me power. You gave me the authority to speak those things that be not as though they were. I'm not going to whine about it because I know it's met. So I'm going to wait on you and in waiting on you, you're going to be glorified. The problem with the church is we're working too much in the natural and not in the supernatural. When somebody asks you for something in the natural, you're waiting on natural to supply natural. See, when somebody asks me for something in the natural, I say, Father, you heard what they want. And evidently, they had to hear you to ask for what they want. So, Father, you know what? I don't have in the natural. But my heart is turned towards you. So I thank you that the amount that's being asked for, that I already have it in my hands. I have more than enough to do what they're asking me to do. And not only to help them, but to help somebody else. Do you know why I know this, Father? Because you said you have made all grace abound towards me. So that I shall have all sufficiency in all things and abound to every good work. Now, God, that's a good work that they're doing. So, God, I want to go in and help them with that work. And not only help them, but have moreover to help somebody else with their work. Who's in the word? The father does not work outside the word. <clears throat> so I'm going to use what he said. But this is the catch. If we're going to use what he says, we got to do what his word tells us to do. The word tells me you got to give. If you're going to get, you got to give. Give and it shall unto you. Good measures. Didn't it say good? Press down. Shaken together. Running over. Shall who give unto your bosom? He said man, didn't he? So evidently God is going to change man's heart to give it to you. He said the measure, the amount that you have given, that's what's going to be measured back to you. You give a dollar, you get a dollar. But when you start giving more than dollars, that's what's going to come back to your house because that's how far you trust God. God know what you have, y'all, before you ask. He wouldn't have told you to give it if he know you didn't have it. So this is what we do. Teresa, when the bank say, ain't nothing in there, when the piggy bank say, ain't nothing in there, you're going to look to the Father and say, it's something up there. So, Father, I thank you that I'm calling forth what's in heaven down here to earth because my heart is ripe. My heart is ripe for giving to the kingdom of God, to giving unto the need that's needed. And guess what? If you trust in your father and you know that he's man, that he will not lie. He's not man that he should lie. God keeps his covenant. He keeps his promise. So are you going to sit there and keep begging him? No, you trust him enough to say, God, it's already in my hand. You trust him enough to say, Dick and Willie, it's already done. I'll have it when you need it. I'll meet the deadline. Why? Because that's where my heart is. See, y'all, if our heart don't get right. See, God gave us his heart. But guess why we can't um, be functioning out of the heart of God? Because it's hardened. We're more sensitive to our needs 
than we are to anybody else's need. If I give them this, what am I going to have? God wouldn't have told you to give it if he hadn't already supplied it. Let's go back to the widow. You all remember the widow and he sent Elijah to Zarephath. He said, I want you to go to this widow and she's going to sustain you. Remember that? So he had to be obedient and he had to go to the widow. But guess when he went to the widow? God put him in a land that was facing famine, y'all. Who does that? Come on, Ms. Linda. God got you operating. He got you speaking the word. He's telling you to tell those people there ain't going to be no rain for about the space of three and a half years, three to three and a half years. You speak the word, and all of a sudden your eyes open up. And you say, well, God, I'm in the land too. I'm speaking stuff, and I'm in the land too. But then God said, this is what I want you to do, Linda. I want you to go and stay by the brook. And I'm going to have a raven. What, what you say? A raven? Do you know how small that raven is? And you know how much I eat? He bringing me them little crumbs. I need more than a crumb, Angelo. I'm used to a chicken leg. I'm loose to a piece of pork chop. Can he tote that over here to this brook? But you trust the father so much, Miss Linda. You say, God, according to your word, let it be unto me. So you sit there and you wait for the raven to come. And the raven come and feed you. But all of a sudden, the brook dries up. Guess what? God knew the brook was going to dry up, Tyson, before the brook dried up. So God already had a way of escape, Tyson, because he knew the brook is going to be dry. So then he had to wait on God to speak and say, God, what do you want me to do next? God spoke. He said, go to that woman in Zarephath, this widow. Now, she's a widow, y'all. It's just her and her son. I'm talking to even the widows in the house. Sometimes, you, you know, your husband ain't there, and you got to finish raising them children, as they say. Some of them are rebellious. You ain't got enough for you molest a child. You just said, I'm going to give up and die. But God is sending the word to Zarephath. And he's sending the word to that woman, and he's telling that woman, I want you to sustain Elijah. I want you to take care of Elijah. Come on, somebody. She ain't got much. But God said, this man of God is carrying the word for me. And I want you to give him what you have. So Elijah got there, and he's telling the woman what to do. She said, wait a minute. I'm going to take these few sticks, this bread, and I'm going to fix it for me and my son, and we're going to die. Elijah said, and I'm paraphrasing, wait a minute, you don't have to die. He said, because I got a word for you today, and the word I got for you is going to bring you life. That word is going to help you to live. So he said, this is what I want you to do. Do like you were going to do, but when you finish making that bread, give me the first piece. Is this man that lost his everlasting mind? I'm giving him the first piece of my bread, and I done told him what I'm going to do. But she hearkened unto the voice of the Lord. And she did what the man of God told her to do. Why? Because she trusted in God as her father. She said, okay, God, whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. She done it, and the Bible says that they had more than enough. Y'all, come on, there's something wrong with the church. We say that we love God, but as soon as it comes to the money, people act a little funny. We don't want to give it up when it comes to the money because I'm holding on to this for a rainy day. Come on, how well do you know your loving father? Because you oh, thank you, Lord. This is the excuse. How I know God told them that. How I know surely God told you to tell me to give you $500. Now, I ain't going to tell her that to her face. I'm just going to be thinking in my mind. How I know that's what God told her. Uh-uh. That's what I got in my bank, and it took me four, five months to say that. I ain't giving that up. No, I'm going to go home and pray about it. If you stay prayed up, you don't have to go home and pray about it, because if you in sync with the Father, you're going to get a hummer hum in your mama's. You're going to hear the spirit. Many, you're going to hear the spirit right then. When you got a relationship with the father, you don't have to go home and pray about it all the time. Because you made connection with the father. What if that widow woman say, wait a minute, Elijah. I got to go in the prayer closet. When I come out, I'll let you know. That woman would have never come out that closet. Because she would have been battling with the enemy. You got to know that. 
the one that God is sending, you got to trust them enough with the word that they're carrying to say, yes, Lord, at that moment. Don't miss the opportunity. Don't wait and then a week or two after it's over, here. No, we don't need it. It's already over with. Okay. Don't say I didn't offer you nothing. Come on, when we know the Father, when we truly know the Father, <clears throat> everything don't have to be prayed about. Because we connect it with the Father. So God is saying, I know best. I know what's best for you. I gave my son for you because I knew what was best for you. And the Bible said, if I freely gave my son, if he gave his son, how much freely will he give you all things? Because he gave his very best. That was his only begotten son. Come on, y'all, how about Mary? And I use this according to the word, being unto me. Mary ain't never been with a man. But because the father sent a word through Gabriel to give Mary, Mary said, okay, according to his word, being unto me. Mary didn't go pray about it. She said, he sent me a word. I know I ain't been with a man, but father knows best. He know what I'm in the need of. He know what we need. So if I can meet the need, she could have said, I ain't, mm -mm. people ain't looking at me funny. She didn't do all that. She said, according to your word, be it unto me. How about Mr. Zacharias? Come on, the priest going in on the behalf of the people. Supposed to be standing before God. When they told him about his wife, Elizabeth, told him about John the Baptist, he was like, uh-uh. He had some doubt. And, the, and then the angel said, your mouth going to be shut until it's time for John to come forth. Because you didn't believe the word of the Lord when it was coming to you. See, some of us today don't take the word for what it is, and this is why the word is not manifested in our lives. This is why it seemed like sometimes we're in the wilderness longer than we're supposed to be. So God said, when you know me as your father, no matter what comes up in your life, you know that the need is already met before it came. That's what we have to do, y'all, as saints. If we're saints and we're part of the kingdom, we've been set apart, made fit for his use. God said, you should know that I'm going to supply what you need. I'm not going to send you to a place without supplying for you for that place. God said, if I told you to get on a plane and you knew you didn't have the <clears throat> money for the plane ticket, you're going to say, yes, Lord, because you're going to provide the ticket for me because you're telling me to get on the plane. So you begin to pack your clothes and don't even have a ticket. So when you begin to pack, pack your clothes to go where God is telling you to go, all of a sudden you get a telephone call, and you get a telephone call from Jennifer Simpson, and she's saying, the Lord has put on my heart to give you $1,000. I don't understand it, but I know this is the Lord. It is his doing, and it's marvelous in his eyes. So I'm going to give you what the Lord is telling me to give you. She don't ask no questions. She said, I'll be over in within an hour. So she give the money. They're going to plane ticket. Now God is saying, get on the plane. So you get on the plane, and you got the money to fly wherever you're going. And then all of a sudden, God said, this is a hotel I want you to stay in. Well, God, I don't have enough money for that host hotel. That hotel hosts the presidents. It hosts celebrities. God, I don't have that kind of money. This is all I got left after I bought this nice plane ticket. I got $300. He said, go in the hotel. You go in the hotel, Sister Denise, and you say, I would like to check in. Could I see identification? Sister Denise, lay the identification on the counter. And they say, we already got you a sweet rat. Come on, somebody. Because you know the Father know what you need. So you go into a place but don't know why you're at the place. So you go in your room. And God began to tell you, I want you to go to such and such a place. Well, Lord, I'm not familiar. Just, just be obedient and go to such and such a place. So you get ready. You come downstairs, Sister Denise. Not familiar with the town or the not familiar with where you are. But you're hearing your father because you know your father know the need and he knows best. So as she come downstairs, here come Miss Monica. Somebody she never knew in her life. And she said, the Lord told me to come up to you and let you know that we're having a five-night revival. 
And, they, and God is saying they need you for this revival. Sister so Nisa said, well, they didn't call me. Well, I'm telling you what the Lord say. Now I'm going to go with you over here because I know I hear my father. So Sister Nisa walk in the place and people are looking for somebody to host the revival that night. And all of a sudden, Sister Nisa get picked for that revival. Saying, I believe the Lord got a word for you. And guess what the word is? Sister Nisa go in there with, Give! And it shall be given unto you. Good measures, price down. Why is she saying that? Because she got an anointing on her life to give. So God had to take a slam across the country where nobody didn't know her to open a door for giving for that church. And guess what he had to do? He had to prove himself to Sister Denise because she trusted him. She said, God, I don't have it, but I'm going to trust you. Because you know what I need and you know what somebody else needs. Y'all, what's happening to the church? If we know the Father, the way we say we know the Father, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. So, Father, I'm not walking by what's going on around me. I'm walking by what your word has said unto me. And this is what I'm going to do. See, that's how church, y'all, come on one accord. Because, see, this is what God does. He's so, he's just so awesome. He don't put you in a church without putting somebody over you. We have too many people trying to run the church, and that's not who God has given the vision to. We have too many people trying to be the pastor, trying to tell people, no, it should be done like this. No, no you should obey those that have rule over you. Why? Because you submit to the ones that God has put what? In authority. Didn't we get this last week? If you honor the one that's in authority, you are honoring God. You may not like what they're saying, but you want to bring honor to who? To God. So we saying, Father, you know best. So I'm going to honor those that you have put me up under. But then God began to show me this, y'all. God is so, he's just so awesome. He was saying, Okay, I knew what you were in need of. I knew you needed healing. I knew you needed deliverance. I knew you needed peace. I knew you needed joy. Come on, somebody. I knew that your mind needed to be transformed. I knew it needed to be changed. I knew everything you had need of even before you needed. And the good thing is, God said, do you think I'm going to put you, I'm going back here on earth without everything you need to conquer what's on earth? He gave us power. He gave us authority. He gave us the baptism of the Holy Ghost to be effectual witnesses for him. Why? Because we represent what, Tyson? The kingdom here on earth. So if we represent the kingdom and it's something that's needed down here on earth where I am, do you think my father's going to leave me on earth without kingdom resources? He said, that's why, Teresa, I gave you keys. He said, I gave you keys to everything that's in heaven. So whatever is going on on earth that ain't right, you can pull it from heaven, but you got to bind what's on earth so it'll be bound in heaven. You got to loose what's in heaven upon the earth. Why aren't we doing this? Because we don't know the Father. We're spending too much time whining and complaining about what don't work. I have learned this. Fact is, man, it don't work. But truth is, I got power and authority of what don't work here on earth. Oh, yeah, you might not be working right now, but I got something for you. I'm going to put the word on you. Come on, we're going to put the word on it. We're going to tell that thing, this is what the word is saying to you today. So you're going to line up with the word. Guess what the problem is, y'all? Guess why we don't do that? Because we don't believe the word. So the Lord was telling me, if I'm giving you the keys, I want you to use the keys. But then he... He was showing me something else. He said, then why aren't people receiving what they need to receive from me if I'm their father? Like, that's my daddy over there. And if I'm in need of something, he want me to come to him. Because he know that I know that he loved me and I would go to my daddy for it. Because I say, okay, daddy got it. Let me go to daddy. I'm going to go get me a few hundred from daddy. I know daddy going to give it to me because I'm his daughter and he loved me. So he's going to give me that money. So when I get broke, I'm going to daddy because daddy got what I need. I only, look, already know I got it, Teresa, before I go to him because I know my daddy. I know he's going to give me what I need. How much you need? Well, you know, just give me, well, just give me all that I take it. 
But see, this is what we do with the earthly father, right? We know they care for us. We know they're going to protect us. You know, they're going to watch over us. They're going to tell us, not that man. I know about that one. I was a dog, and he's a dog. I know what a dog looked like. But daddy, he loves me. No, he now, Daddy know best, right? Ain't that right? I done been round them corners. I done been ducking and dodging. That's a dog. I can look in his eyes and he panting right now. <laughs> Once a dog, always a dog. And every dog has his day, right? So daddy knows. But we have a heavenly father. He gave us an earthly father, but we have a heavenly father for supernatural things. And now that I'm a supernatural being, I have to trust God for the supernatural to say, God, I need some of that supernatural on my natural so people know that I'm a part <clears throat> of the kingdom of God. So when I'm trusting God like that, I'm not going to have a problem, Miss Deborah, when things pop up in my life because I got a God who can. I have a father who can. And if we know we have a father who can, he's not going to let us down. He's going to let us know what needs to be done. So I said, okay, God, why is it that man, talking about male and female, don't go to you the way we should when we need stuff? He says, because they have put their trust in something or somebody. Meaning that they have spent more time with things and more time with man than they have spent with me. And that's who they go to, so they have idols now. So these idols that they have, they look up to these idols more than they look up to me. Why do y'all think that when God took them out of Egypt, he told them that whatever land they go into, he said, I want you to just get rid of all these idols. I want you to get rid of all these images. I want you to tear them down. Tear these altars down. When we get born again and we get saved, we accept Jesus. Guess what we got to do? We got to start renewing our mind according to the word. And as we renew our mind, we begin to tear down things in our lives that's not like God. Things that have taken the place of God. And God is saying right here in this house, we have people that have idols. It may be your family. It may be your car. It may be your house. It may be your job. Whatever it is, and you're spending more time with those things than you're spending with God, that's who you trust. When you put everything before God, that's who you trust. Well, I can't come to church today because I have to clean my house. Or I can't come fellowship today because my family just come home. Bring them to church. Yeah. Oh, I can't come to church today because I got to watch somebody. I got to watch my nephew. got to watch my niece. Oh, I can't come to church today because I work six days a week. I can't come fellowship with the church. You're putting all of those things before God, so you're not trusting God. You're trusting those things more than you trust God. Anything that you put before God is your idol. You're supposed to have, he said, have no other God before me. That's one of his commands. Y'all, this is what grieved me when God was saying, we should know that he knows best and he know our needs before we ask, right? So we shouldn't get all wound up when something is approaching. We should say, God, you're already aware of this, so I'm going to give you thanks that it's already taken care of according to your word. It's already done. It's already done. I'm just going to give you glory. And that's when you start casting down thoughts and everything that's coming against you because you know God is greater than those things, right? That's when you know that God is God. But God said, it's too many people putting things before me. We stay out of the house of God because we're tired. We stay out of the house of God because, you know, it's just not convenient for me. Or we come to the house of God and we're still not here. Because we're just letting people know, I'm here, but God is not first and foremost. God said, I want to be first and foremost in your life. He said, when you put me first, nobody has to ask you to do nothing. Because you know what you need to do. Y'all think about it. If the church, the body of believers, would get into this word and get to know him as father, me as the one he has put in authority, wouldn't have to tell you what to do in your position, would not have to ask you anything. You're ready to do it because you know that the father knows best and I'm honoring the father and I'm in line with his word. 
We have too much division in the church because we don't know the Father. When we know what <clears throat> the Father wants, we won't buck against the one that God has put in place. We just do it. We go talk to the Father about it and say, God, if this is what you want me to do, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to honor you. Do my flesh like it? Mm -mm. But God, I ain't going on flesh. I'm going by the Spirit. I'm going by what the Word of God says. And I'm going to close with this. I'm going back to Egypt. They were in Egypt for 400 and some years. This is Egypt over here. And this right here over here is the promised land. And God told them that he was going to bring them out of Egypt. He told Abraham that before the people even were aware of that. God gave Abraham a promise. And Abraham trusted him so much as, as being his father that Abraham didn't even get to see it. But he knew what God was saying was true. So God called Moses as the deliverer. He prepared Moses. He was telling them how to bring the people out. Y'all know the people come out of Egypt. But one thing that happened, God said, I can't take them this way. Don't father no best. If I take them this way, they're going to repent, meaning they're going to change their mind, and they're going to go back to Egypt. Because if I take them in war before it's their time to go in war, they're going to turn back. What am I saying? Some people don't even show up in the house of God and ready to do spiritual warfare. Read to cast out a demon and ain't even in the word of God. Read to prophesy and don't even know what it means. You know why? Because you want to be exalted. But see, he said, I can't take them that way. If I take them that way, they're going to change their mind and they're going to go back where they came. So he took them through the wilderness. He said, you need to have a wilderness experience. Why? In this wilderness experience, Sister Loretta, you're going to learn how to trust me when you don't have water. When you don't have food to eat, you're going to learn how to trust me in this wilderness experience to know that I'm God and God alone. So those people went out there in the wilderness. They had Moses to give them the word. Come on, I'm your Moses. I'm in here giving you the word to help you to get through your wilderness experiences, telling you you got to know the Father first. Don't just get, just get born again. You got to go into the word of God and get transformed and get changed. So when you go through these wilderness experiences, you can say, Father, I know you're here with me. So the father was teaching them how to trust him more than they trusted Egypt. But these people even brought some of these worldly people out with them. And they start complaining. And y'all know when they start complaining, then the Israelites started complaining. Then they start turning away from God. You should have left us in Egypt. We should have died in Egypt. Isn't that what we do with God? But when we trust God and we know him, we say, Father, you know what's best for me. Though my flesh is toe up, I'm trusting what your word said. This is what your word says. This is what I'm going to do. So, Father, I thank you that you know best for me. And you know what I'm in the need of, even before I ask. So I'm going to give you glory. So y'all know that some of them died in the wilderness, but some come out, right? And they still had to trust God. So God is asking you today, do you trust me enough to know that when you don't have enough, I have already supplied it? Do you trust me enough that when you're going through in your body, that you already heal even though you're in pain? Do you trust me enough that when your mind is toe up, when you're going through depression and when you're going through oppression, that you already have the mind of Christ? See, you got to understand that whatever his word says, y'all, that's what we have to do. And I'm here to tell you, God is here to tell you today, every need in this house has already been met. God met your need even before you had the need. So why wouldn't you want to call on a God who's already provided, who's already healed, who's already delivered you, who's already prospered you. Why wouldn't you want to call on a, a God that already know your plans, your purposes, your destinies? And guess what? He know you're coming in. He know you're going out. So why wouldn't we want to trust him even when they tell us you ain't going to make it? But that ain't what God said. Because we're turning to him. Who did Hezekiah turn to? He turned his face to the wall. And God sent a word through Isaiah. Say, I want you to go back to Hezekiah. Why did he turn to God? Because he knew a God who can.
But old Hezekiah, after he done all that, his ignorant self, took him into the temple, showed him everything he had. And Isaiah said, why are you going to go do that? They're going to take everything out of here. He was happy to live, man. So he telling them all his business. He didn't seek God on that one, did he? He just went and told it. So everything we do, we need to go to, to the Father. Don't look at it like it's bigger than what you have. God is bigger than anything that we we'll ever go through. Don't look at it because, y'all, I'm getting to the place, me and my husband, when something go on around, I'm something like, what can I do about it? I ain't got enough funds to handle it. So, God, I put it in your hands. Just tell me what you want me to do. Tell me what you want me to say. I need revelation on this so I can speak those things that be not as though they were. I need a word from you. I need the word. I can't move on this. My money can't handle this. I don't have enough of it. So, God, I'm trusting you. Y'all know our, our testimony, even dealing with our daughter college. We didn't have that. Lord knows we didn't have it, but I knew a father who can. So guess what? I had to follow his instructions. And even with me following them, I had to give them to my daughter, and she had to follow what God was telling her. Can y'all imagine teenagers when you're telling them no to this? And they like, well, I don't understand. Listen to what I'm saying. This is what God is saying. So I want you to hear God. Leave me out, but I want you to hear God speaking through me, and this is what we're going to do according to God. And guess what? Because of what God said. Y'all, we didn't have to put down nothing. And the funny part is, when we had to put it down, y'all laugh if you want to, but they said she owed about a hundred and some dollars. Some people would have paid that. You would have paid it, wouldn't you? I said, I ain't paying nothing. Daddy was laughing at me. I said, they said she owed a hundred and some dollars, and I ain't paying nothing. Mary said, Mama, they said, I said, you don't owe nothing. I said, so we're going to wait. Is that the truth, Aria? We're going to wait on the Lord, baby. We don't owe nothing. Money cometh to my house. So this is what we do, y'all. And let me tell you something. You have such an expectancy knowing that God got your back. When the, when the need is there, that you're saying, wait a minute, God, you know I ain't got that money. So evidently, you got a prayer. I need to hear what your plan is right now. So I don't know what to do because sometimes we do stuff ahead of God and we don't have to do it. And we miss out on what God want to do in us and through us. So God is saying, learn to wait on me. And if you learn to wait on me, it's because you trust in me and you're not depending on nobody else to pick up the slack. Don't have plan A and plan B. God is the final plan. So he wants you to look to him, y'all. He wants you to trust him for everything that you need. Start talking to him. You have the Holy Spirit, your helper, and say, Holy Spirit, I don't have the money for this. You know, my body is going through this right here. I don't know what it is, but the creator does. He created me. He made me. He know what's, what's not functioning right. So, Holy Spirit, I need an answer. He said if I call on him, he would answer me and show me great and mighty things. So, I need an answer right now. And guess what? God know when it need to be fulfilled, y'all. We get in a hurry because man called you and said, if I don't have this by this date, <clears throat> I'm going to come get my stuff. You're going to honor the one that's telling you that and say, okay, thank you. But when you get off that phone, you're going to say, wait a minute, God, that ain't what you said. No, I don't have the money, God, but God, your word tells me that when I give, it is given back to me. Your word tells me, you know, to be a titer. I am a titer. So, God, I thank you that that's already taken care of. And you wait on the Lord. And then guess what happened while you're waiting? The day come, you still don't see the money. But guess what? God turned the heart of that man. And say, you know what? I'm going to defer that. And guess what? He deferred it, but God paid it off. Why? Because God said, baby, you trusted me. You didn't go on what man told you. You trusted me. See, in the Bible, they knew God wasn't going to let them die like that. Because they had a testimony. Have y'all ever thought about that? God, I have a testimony. You ain't going to let me go out like this. God, people got to know that you're God through my life. So know today that God know what you're in the need of before you ask. And if you go into the word of God, the word has already fulfilled every need.
that you're in the need of before you ask. The only thing you got to do is believe it and receive it. Before you even go to him in prayer, you got to believe that you have it. That it's already yours. So God said, can you believe me today for whatever you're going through in your life? Can you believe that I already healed you? Can you believe that I already set you free? Can you believe I already delivered you? Can you believe the day that you have the mind of Christ? Can you believe the day that you're debt free even though the debt is running over? Can you believe the day you owe no man nothing but to love him? Can you believe all that today? Yes, you can. Why? Because it's in his word. And whatever his word says, y'all, he's already done. We ain't waiting for him to do it. God has already done it. Sister London, could you come up here for a minute? Look at your neighbor and say, it's already done. Say, it's already done. God has perfected those things concerning us. Amen. God is doing a good work. God is doing a good work in you. And don't you come down. God said, I'm hastening my word to perform it even in your life. And God said, the more you put in, the more that's going to come out. God said, I'm giving you clear direction in every area of your life because you asked me. God said, some of the things that yet. This keeps me going on those days when I feel like giving up fire. I believe the storm will soon be over. I believe.